Welcome to our latest edition of Last Tackle, Betfred's Rugby League show. I'm delighted to welcome two very special guests of the show, two mates as well. It's the Warrington World's assistant coach, Lee Breers. Thanks for joining us, Lee. And, uh, well, Lee, I don't know how to juice Scully. Do we know? What, what does he actually do? Do we know? <laughs> yeah, oh, jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> you know what? I'll introduce, this, I'll introduce you this week, Scully, as one of the uh, England coaching staff. How about that? Oh, that'll do. I'll do, mate. And I believe as well, today, you've just had a special a session with um, Sean Wayne. Yes, we have, yeah. All the, really good. Um, all, the, all the England coaching staff across all the, uh, all the different programmes, you know, from the, the youth, the women, the wheelchair, obviously the, the Knights and the seniors. Just a, a bit of a webinar with, with Sean and, and listen to his story, really, his, his journey from, from playing, up, obviously working his way through through his coaching, uh, his coaching career up to his, uh, you know, his current head coach's role at, with England, and you know some of the stuff that he's done through. It's uh, it's real, real great insight to to you know to what he's done and and obviously his, his journey, but you know what what the guy's about as well. Um, you know, he's, he's so passionate about about this game and you know and, and, and winning. So and it's it's great to hear, obviously being a being involved with the England setup. Uh, Lee, I can only speak as a rugby league fan. I just think it's great news to have uh, Sean back in the game, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. You know, when when he got announced, you know, there's rumours that he was going to get it for a little while, and when he got announced, I think it gave everybody in the English game a bit of a boost. Obviously, we we had Wayne Bennett, who you know everybody knows as as possibly the greatest rugby league coach what's ever lived, but it doesn't mean that you you're going to be successful in a, in another country. And it, it was great for England, was Wayne, but. The passion what Sean brings, and he's going to bring, he's, he's going to bring the next, you know, next batch of England players through with, you know, showing that passion on the field. And, you know, he, he can be around, he can be full time around, around each club, Sean, and, and seeing what players are doing. He can come to every game. So, you know, he's, he's going to be hands on in that role. And it's, it's fantastic. He's a great bloke. And it was, it was a shame that we lost him to Union for a bit, but, you know, he'll probably come back more determined than ever that, to make a difference. Now, obviously, gents, there's only one place to start with over 11,000 deaths now. And our thoughts are with those families. I mean, they're not just numbers, are there? There's mums, dads, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters. You know, it's tragic what's going on. Uh, Lee, you're getting involved. You're volunteering at the moment. Yeah, so volunteering at, uh, with the Steve Prescott Foundation, you know, uh, our base is at the Eccleston Arms in St. Helens. And what basically what's happened is as soon as this uh, you know, this situation arose. Uh, the Eccleston Arms owner, Andrew McCall, said, well, we'll, we'll change a pub into basically a supermarket where the NHS are vulnerable, the people on the front line uh, can come and, and get their shopping. You know, at the start of this, if you've seen every supermarket, was everybody was grabbing anything they can, they were raiding everything. So and, Andrew, you know, built this sh shop, if you like, out of his pub and, 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 and teamed up with the SPF and also I must I must uh, say that the Blackbrook Rugby League Club Open Age Craig Lyon set up a, a phone line where he, he had a certain amount of drivers were just going delivering you know to people's houses so we brought all three together uh, and and now we 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 have a delivery service from from Nicholson Arms it's 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 making a massive difference in our town a massive difference and we've also branched out we've been to you know Liverpool Widnes, Warrington. Uh, so it's not just St. Helens and you know, we, we have up to nine people each day delivering probably five people in, in the in the uh, in the pub, you know, getting getting food orders ready. So it's it's making a massive difference to our community. And I saw on Friday on social media Lee, you were delivering Easter eggs. Yeah, so again, there's it's it's been fabulous, uh Fabulous things happen and, and people are donating a lot of stuff and, and part of the donations was a lot of Easter eggs. So we, we just, you know, took them to the care homes where we've got frontline people that probably don't get recognised enough and we were giving Easter eggs to the staff there. So it's making a big difference. Small things make a big difference and 
you know, it gets us out the house as well. And Scully, you were doing your bit on Friday. You cut um, Johnny Vegas's hair, didn't you? But obviously at a safe distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously <clears throat> keeping the uh, keeping the two meter rule, mate. So it's uh, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. Uh, obviously all tied in with, with with what Lee's been doing and you know and doing some of the deliveries as well. You know, we're based at the at the AK Arms. Um, obviously, Johnny's been a big part of that, that service as well. So yeah, he, uh, he put his hand up for um, for for a haircut and asked me to. Uh, Asked me to do the honours. Uh, you know, he's raised over three thousand pounds as well for the for the SPF to, to help this uh, this cause. So yeah, uh, you know, it was a, it was it was real good fun, and obviously we, we was covered by the you know the Steph show on uh, on Channel Four. So great awareness for for some great causes as well. And if Steve Prescott was still with us, he'd have got right stuck into this, wouldn't he? What was going oh, on? Oh, he'd, he'd have been leading from the front as he always did. Um, it's just it's, it's so great that you know there's so many good things happening. You know, certainly in in St Helens as well, and and to do with the, the Steve Prescott Foundation, that his name is just used so wisely and, and so positively. Um, you know, his, his legacy continues to to grow from go from strength to strength. And Lee, you're obviously doing a great job delivering food, but I see you're wearing an NHS T-shirt. I mean, well, the job the NHS are doing is just well, I can't put it into words, and you know so grateful for what the NHS are doing for our country. Yeah, I suppose no words would be able to justify what they're doing. Uh, we, we always knew that the, uh, the NHS in, in this country was fab fabulous uh, and probably undervalued a lot. Um, it, the true colours of what the NHS mean to everybody uh, are, are shining through now. Without these guys, you know, putting their lives at risk each and every day. You know, some of them not even going home. Some of them staying in hotels, not seeing family. To save other people, it's, you know, it's the least me and Paul can do, is go and deliver in some food. Uh, they, they are unbelievable national heroes and always will be. Yeah, it, look, it's quite incredible doing it. And, and not just NHS staff, Scully. I, there's so many key workers, isn't there? I mean, teachers, refuge uh, collectors as well. There is so many people who are working so hard that, well, help fight this crisis. Yeah, yeah, and you can you can see like you said, like Brazy said, you know, they're, they're putting themselves out there and putting themselves in danger as well to to service other people. You know, I've got friends who are, who are police, you know, people who work in in supermarkets to to keep these these shelves stacked and and keep people in uh, in food and uh, and products and that. So yeah, respect to to all the people who are who are still battling on. You know, dis despite the risks and you know there is massive risks and we're seeing it in the NHS that. You know, there's so many lives been lost in in caring for others, and it's uh, it's heartbreaking. But you know, it's it's why these special people do what they do. It's it's why they're in the jobs that they are, and you know, all uh, all credit to them. And I just hope that when all this is over, that you know, they they deserve the the rewards that you know that they deserve. I think the country will never forget, and hopefully, the country will be a better place uh, after this as well. Uh, Lee, obviously, at the moment, you can't be the Warrington assistant coach, but you are looking to, you know, improve yourself, aren't you, as a coach? I believe you've been in contact with some NRL clubs. Is that correct? Yeah, so obviously we, we furlonged at, at Warrington, so we can't, we can't do any, any work there. So, obviously, in every, any negative in, in, in my way of life, I always think about if there's a, any negative, there's always a positive. So, I mean, I'm just using this little period as a growth period for myself. And I've been in contact, I've got some good contacts in, in the NRL. So... In this little while, what I've done a, we've we've made I've made contact to, to an NRL club, uh, an assistant coach who I played with over there, uh, over here, and, and what we're doing, we're, we're preview previewing each other's last two games, as if we're going to play them in the third game. And what we'll do, we'll have a we'll have a Zoom on Thursday, and, and and we'll see what they come up with to what we've come up with, and see how we can help each other, but also see how we were going to attack them, they were going to attack us, and. And, and, and just bounce ideas off us. It's, it's, it's a great learning tool. I, I can't wait for it. Because obviously, it was the last rugby league game I went to was that World Club Challenge, Scully. And, you know, I, let's be honest, we can learn a lot from the NRL, can't we? Oh, we certainly can. You know, it's, uh, there's no denying it. It's the, it's the premier competition in, in our sport. And, you know, I think, but like Brazy says, we can, we can all learn from each other. Um, you know, I'm sure that there's, there's things that, you know, Brazy's mate will, uh, will pick up from from what he's he's showing at what Warrington do. It's yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a tremendous competition. Obviously, you know we'll come up against a real good, uh, real good rooster side in that in that World Cup challenge. 
do you think the mistakes cost you in that game looking back now? Yeah. Not taking think, chances, uh, not being I clinical think, enough? Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there was obviously there was a number of young players in that in that side, the same side at the, at the time as well, probably not with that experience of, of so, such big games. I think the positives to looking at it is, is the amount of opportunities that were created, you know, and, and certainly in that first half. But, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lesson learned that you only get in, against good teams and, and, and big games, you only get so many opportunities and you've got to take them, um, you know, be, be more clinical. And I think we, we, they'll learn from that. They'll learn from it and they'll be better players from it. You know, we've all been through it as players. We've, we've had, you know, games where, you know, you can reflect back on and, and, and know that that's been a, a big part in, in your career development. Now, I know a lot of people watching this thinking, right, when we're going to get Rugby League back. I've spoken to the, the Super League uh, this morning and look, there is no timetable. They're just going to adhere to government um, advice. And obviously, that's the right thing to do at the moment because at the moment, there's too many uncertainties of what's going on. And, you know, I think all of us are just thinking about, obviously, a number of people that this is affecting dramatically and, you know, the people are losing their lives and our thoughts are with all their families, as I said earlier, they're not just a number. This is someone's mum, dad, brother, sister, auntie, uncle, friend, etc. So uh, thoughts with them. But uh, what I'd like to do for the rest of the show, gents, is that uh, it just turn the clock back a little bit. Uh, first of all, I want to go back to August last year. And Lee, you were the coach. You were the underdogs, weren't you, that day? And you did a job on the Scully St. Helens. Yeah, we were those massive underdogs. I think we'd be playing just before this as well and, and got stuffed as well and, and we, we we were missing you know our marquee player in Blake Austin uh, went into it with only one recognised halfback so really had to simplify the game plan Saints had a few injuries leading up to it as well I think uh, they, they had about four or five players who had not played for a while so it's tough when you play at Wembley to, to be injured and then that's your next game because as, as Scully will tell you Wembley saps your legs very quickly you know the emotion of it uh, obviously, the mental emotion and the physical emotion, it saps you. Uh, but we, we just had a simple game plan, basically taking on down the middle and, and kicking to a corner and, and waiting for them to make a mistake. And, you know, uh, should I say, fortunately for us, them guys who probably been out for a few weeks and a bit underdone were, were making the mistakes and we took advantage of it. And what kind of feeling is it to win it as a coach compared to winning it as a player? Obviously, different for different reasons, but I, it was more more satisfying to win that one. I don't know if it was because I'm a St. Helens lad and you know we beat <laughs> Saints possibly, uh, but probably more satisfying to, to win that one when when everything you know everybody everybody wrote us off and and I mean everybody. We we just really it was you know we we just rounded the the uh, we, we just rounded everybody up. In, in training, we, we trained with just 19 men. All the other guys who weren't ready, who weren't going to play, they didn't train with us. And it was like, it was totally siege mentality. And, you know, it was really relaxed. We'd been there uh, the year before and got beat. Uh, so to, to go back and to look, the biggest thing for, for the coaching part was we learned from our, our mistakes. You know, we, we learned from getting beat by Catalan uh, and, 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 and the week leading up to it, everything was was planned meticulously, and you know we we, we relaxed. We were un, the underdog, you know, and, and on on that any given day, anybody can beat anybody, which which showed. Uh, and Scully, there's a couple of incidents you probably can point towards the uh, uh, Morgan Knowles early on, etc. But let's be honest, the better team did win on that day. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, and like the Razor said, you know, it's uh, the one-off occasions. Finals are, 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 are very, very different. You know, they're, they're, a, they're a tempo, you know, they're, they're a quicker game than a, than a standard game. Obviously, you're playing at a neutral venue where, where players are not used to playing under, under that, you know, the, the, the big lights. And uh, it's all about handling the pressure and, uh, and wanting to handle the pressure better than Saints that day. And like, like Lee says, you know, there was a couple of Saints players who I think went into that game underdone. You know, James Rawby, uh, Alex Wormsley were, were two who'd, who'd not played for probably a month before. And it is a big game to, to go straight into because just the the the, the mental emotion and, and you know nervous. Oh, 
seems energy to going into that, that. You, uh, of, of energy and, and when you've not played for a few weeks so fast uh, Scully just having a, a couple of problems with his, his internet there. It's because we're all working from home, isn't it? The internet, everyone's on it. Uh, I'll go to Lee until we see uh, Scully uh, moving again as well. But uh, the Challenge Cup's obviously always been good to you in your career uh, at Warrington. You won it in 2009, didn't you? There'd been a long wait. Warrington had not won it since uh, 1974, so that was a big game. Uh, when you won it in uh, 2010, you got the Lance Trophy, which is a uh, man of the match as well. And you won it again in 2012. So... Obviously, you've got great fond memories of Lee. I have, yeah. Just before I go into that, if Scully can't hear us, I can really call him now, can't I? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Call Scully what you want now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's back. Hey, he's back. <laughs> no, so, yeah, obviously, the Challenge Cup, we, I got beat in five semi-finals, you know, prior to two, 2009. And they are the worst pe place to get beat, the, the semi-final. You're so close to, to Wembley, but yet so far away. And, I just couldn't get over the line and to, to, to win that one in 2-9 when we beat Wigan in the semi-finals, it was, it was unbelievable and I, I, was, I was a really nervous player beforehand, before every game I used to be violently sick and uh, leading up to that semi-final that, that week I didn't sleep at all and, and what it felt like I didn't, I was being sick every time I woke up, I was sick before the game, yeah. half time being sick uh, and, and then we won the game and you know We'd, we'd finally got to Wembley and then the, lead, the week leading up to Wembley, it was real weird. I slept really well, uh, got to the game, wasn't sick and I was like, oh, what's going on here? I, I thought I had to be sick to, to play well and, and, and I truly believe this. Uh, you know, they, they speak about the 10,000 hour rule and once you do something 10,000 times or 10,000 hours, you know, you've mastered it and forever since I was four years of age, you know, wanted to be a rugby league player. Every little pit, piece of grass, every post was always Wembley. So I'd always played there since being four up until when we did in 2009. So I'd rehearsed it that many times in the head. When it comes to it, 2009, it was like, wow, it's, I'm not even nervous. And a big thing for me, and I've always remember, was actually Bobby Golden when he played at Saints. And he, he got this from when he was at Wigan, was Wembley's a one in the tunnel. Wembley, you can find out what the other team are like in that tunnel. Uh, and, and on that day, we was lined up side by side and Keith Mason was at, opposite me, the, the other field prop, and you could see they were a bit nervous and he was jittering. And he just turned around and said, listen, if we, if we sort Lee Breers out today, we'll win the game. So I just looked over, smiled at him and said, it's funny you should say that because we're coming at you. Anyway, I, I don't know if he got on that game. I don't know. He, was, he didn't play that well. Uh, so you could tell straight away they were nervous. And going back, just revisiting Saints, you could tell that they were nervous as well. A lot of things happened in the tunnel at Wembley. You can get a good, a good, you know, eye for what's going to happen that day. Uh, Scully, do you think, in many respects, obviously you'd have loved to have won the Challenge Cup last year as a, as a Saints fan, but it was possibly the kicking you needed because you had, you'd won the season already, hadn't you, at Canter? It made sure you didn't slip up in the rest of the Super League season, didn't it? Yeah, and I think going into that that Challenge Cup, um, you know, all the pressure was on Saints because of that that expectancy, and you know, probably like you know, truth be known, literally, you know, you, you expect a Saints winning that in that game. Um, so all the pressure certainly was on them, but it did just goes to show you, you know, come come kick off that that counts for nothing, and it probably did reignite that that fire for for the rest of the season, and, and obviously they went on. To uh, to complete the uh, the league leaders and uh, and obviously the, the big one at Old Trafford. But Lee, obviously you've fallen short in a grand final before Leeds in 2012 and Wigan in in 2013. Plenty of Warrington fans watching this will be thinking, "Come on, where's it going to be all year?" Well, let's hope very soon. You know, but, you know, there's there's a lot of hard work to to go in between now and and getting one over the line. Up. You know, we've been lucky in in, in a couple. Uh, and, and to win a comp, you've got to have everything in it go in your favour. But make no bones about it, we're working as hard as we can by this, behind the scenes. Not only the players and the coaching staff, but also the full organisation. And, and that's what you need. You need a full, strong organisation to, to win one. So let's hope, you know, let's hope we can be we can be part of that very first one. Gents, in very difficult times, I've really enjoyed your company. But let's just finish. We've mentioned it. 
Let's just praise the NHS staff and all the key workers out there. Start with you, Lee. Yeah, obviously, words can't describe what what you're doing at the moment, and uh, we we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It's it's keeping everybody safe. But we'll say, let's make the job easy and stay in, stay safe. Uh, it's hard enough as it is. Let's let's do the NHS a favour, and let's stay at home and help them. Scully. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, as, as Lee says, you know, let's let's make the job as easy as we can for from obviously in, in in following the rules, following the guidelines, and you know, not only keep yourself and your and your family safe, but the, the people who are who are out there caring for for uh, for everybody. So yeah, respect to the NHS, and you know, everybody get out there on Thursday night again and uh, and give them the round of applause that they, they well deserve. Well said, gents. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today, and everyone watching. Just as Lee and Scully have said, come on. Stay at home, stay safe, and it's a massive thank you to our NHS and all the key workers who are keeping the show on the road. We'll be back next Tuesday with another edition of The Last Tackle. Champion.